Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Okay, Brad, today you want to talk about MRIs, PET scans. What's the, the other one here? CAT scans. CAT scans, mm -hmm. oh yeah. And you know, are they any good? You know, do we need to do them? Right, yeah. that's a good question. Are they helping? Yeah. Lots and of questions. I, I think one of the things that the general public, particularly in the USA, I don't know around the world, but you know, this may be true, and I think it is from the, some of the comments we get from the Far East, is people think once they get a scan, an MRI scan, whatever it may be, that information is gold. It's whatever right. it says, it's going to give you the answer for your problem. And that's exactly right. You're right, Brad. I have patients who come in and they're like, I just want to know what's going on. I just want to get an answer why yep. I'm having this pain. Yep. And the fact is, even if you see something on the scan, Brad, often that may not be causing the pain. It's, it's very hard to get a solid answer quite right. often. So the doctor, the therapist, whoever it is that's working it, they use that scan. I don't know why I'm holding this, by the way. <laughs> it looked good, Bob. <laughs> Eventually. They, uh, they use a scan as part of the assessment. Not, it's not the go-to thing. I mean, there are times sometimes like clearly there's a tumor there that's a clear problem. But a lot of times... Or sometimes you'll see a clear herniation that is pushing right on the nerve. Yeah. And, you know, then that's fairly clear. Right. And we're seeing it clinically, right. too. Oftentimes, though, it's questionable. Yeah. So what I did, Bob, is I got some information. I went right to the top. I got a clinical study. Uh, from the New England Journal of Medicine. And you may not know this, but that is one of the top journals. I mean, it, 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 that's one of the most respected journals in medicine. Right. So. And this is written by uh, Dr. Bruce Hillman and a Dr. Jeff Goldsmith. Goldsmith. Okay. Uh, one's an MD and the other one's a PhD. And, you know, these guys have done their homework. They've got experience. They know what they're talking about. And first of all, the question that you may ask, is the MRI, the CAT scan, the PET scan, is it necessary? So I'm, I'm just gonna actually take a minute to read right from the report. It says, there is broad agreement that an unknown but substantial fraction of imaging examinations are unnecessary and do not positively contribute to patient care. Right. And then it goes on in more detail about it. All doctors are familiar with this information. Right. Um, and I think a lot of them do hold off. Brad, you know, I think a lot of them do sure. try, try, but there's some that I think maybe push it a little too quickly. Yeah, and, you know, and sometimes it's a tough call. Yeah, it there, is a there, tough call. There's another point that helps sway their decision, and we'll get into that next. Uh, here's one of them, is misleading marketing. This has got nothing to do with the doctors. This has to do with management and people who... In administration. Right. You know, healthcare, they're believe it or put, not, it's a business. Yeah, they're trying to push their organization. And right. Doing their, so they go, we have the latest in... You know, MRIs, we have the latest technology. Sure. Come in and see us. Yeah, we'll we take, can help you we'll more. find your problem. And, and listen to this about the comment about this. Information on the web, in the lay press, and in direct to consumer advertising has promoted the benefits, benefits of diagnostic imaging while underplaying the risks and the cost. As a result, despite well-published concern over the possible long-term effects of accumulated diagnostic radiation, patients pressure their physicians to refer them for imaging studies even when imaging is unlikely to prove right. any value. So to summarize that, yeah, basically the patient is going, doctor, I want an image. You know, I want a CT scan because yeah. I want to find out what's going on. And, and the doctor you know, succumbs to the pressure, basically, to right. some extent. Right. Times. Here, well, By ahead. the way, Brad, in case you're new oh. to our channel, a lot of you are, yep. uh, please take just a second to subscribe. We've got a subscribe button on the screen here. We upload videos every day, yeah. and they're all on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free. And right. give you information like this that you may yeah. not be aware of. Here's another one. Uh, as far as another reason why they may have you do a scan, physicians often request imaging exams out of concern over liability risk. Right. Okay, they're Lee, trying to watch their budget. Right. You know, I understand it, Brad. I mean, it, you know, if you get sued once, you're going to wish you would have maybe done a little more testing. Exactly. But uh, here, here's another thing. Lawsuits arising from the overuse of testings are exceedingly rare. Okay, in other words, if you have them do a test or a scan, you're not going to get sued because right. you had them. You're going to 
have this lawsuit if because you didn't do it exactly. Yeah. And that's so that's the, that's the big quandary that our doctors are in. And, and I don't know if this is true throughout the world, but in the United States, it certainly is. Yeah. Okay. And, and the last one. Listen to this. As far as uh, in Massachusetts, physicians show that 28 percent of diagnostic imaging referrals represent defensive practice. Sure. So 28 percent of the scans were done just because they don't want to get sued. Right. You know, they want to minimize their their effort. You know the potential for getting sued. So, I mean, what does this mean to you? If it, one, it, you know, you may get some misleading information from the, the scan. Sure, uh, right. And two, you may be paying for a lot of this. I mean, uh, when people got a, a lot of out-of-pocket costs right, now. Right, right. Um, you know, what you could have done maybe is just start off by going to a physical therapist right away. <laughs> exactly. And, and not pay the big cost of a scan. You know, maybe you're not paying all of it, but you're paying a percentage right. of it for your deductible. And, and, and a therapist, you get a good therapist, especially, you know, these updated therapists, so, so to speak. The, the education is getting higher and higher as these therapists are coming out. We're getting smarter because we continue to educate ourselves. We know if you should have yeah. a scan. If there's any possibility, it's like, oh, things don't sound right. Yeah, things, things are getting are better. Going well. You see the doctor, and then they're probably going to get a scan. Right. I can give you an example of one. I just worked with a patient with neck pain all the way down around in her ham. hand. She went to the doctor. The one doctor, side? One side, okay. yeah. Went to the doctor. Not only had one MRI, she had two MRIs, no results shown. Then she had a CAT scan. They still couldn't find the problem. And then they scheduled a EMG test, which is another expensive test. She spent over $7,000 already because that was her deductible. And I'm guessing she's pushing for this probably to some extent. Well, actually, she was confused. She was You're worried, right? yep. And then some, somewhere along the line, someone said, well, maybe physical therapy. And I don't know if she, just, she decided to or uh, one of the physicians said, well, maybe we should try it. I worked with her, and I'm not a guru therapist, but I, can, I do all right on stuff like this. In three visits, her symptoms were completely gone. Yeah, and this is not that unusual, what Brad's talking about. Again, he's not a miracle worker. You're a good therapist, Brad. Right, but, it's but, confident. But, yeah, you know, average to above average therapist. And these are the results you can see quite often without having to go through all the scans and stuff. Right. So I guess the point is, if you're going to see your doctor and your doctor says, let's get an MRI, maybe you can say, what are my options? Do I really need it or can I see a therapist first for just a couple, three visits and then come back and get the MRI? It, it, it's going to save... It, it could save you money, just like it would have saved that woman six and a half, seven thousand let's dollars. Let's go back to this reason why I was holding this bread, because yeah. a lot of times what they will find out, so now you get the results of the scan, and it mm -hmm. says you have a bulging disc or a herniated disc, and now you're, oh my God, I have a bulging disc or a herniated disc. And oftentimes the scan will show three or four bulging right. discs. You know, it's like, oh my God, my back is falling apart. But what you don't know is that these types of things are found in everybody, even people without pain, right. especially as you get older. It's yeah. part of the aging process. Right. Your spine is aging. So like when you get up into your 60s or 70s, there's probably a better than 50% chance, Brad, that you have a bulging disc or herniated disc. Right, you have something that's not normal. Our bodies are But it's perfect. not hurting. Exactly. So you know, when you come into a therapist, what we're looking for is what causes your symptoms, what makes it worse. Right. So like if we have somebody, we'll have them stand up and we'll have them do some bending forward, repeat bending. Right. And if that starts increasing their pain, well, we know that we're not going to have them do that. <laughs> So right. we might have them do extensions, right. which we've got lots of videos on that. But right. and and if that starts taking away their pain, do you really even know? You need to know what's causing your pain. Then I mean, you know what I'm saying exactly right. Because and this is something that people have a hard time understanding. Understanding. Yeah. But if you've been in the medical field, it's especially if you're a therapist and physicians know this as well. It's very clear, and you can tell we're gonna kind of getting yeah. into this. We're a little frustrated because. Unnecessary things, you know, scans are being done when they don't need to. And it, all this money is being spent, and people aren't getting relief. That's the problem, too. A scan does not give you relief. And it, it, it does it's anxiety. I mean, this person right. that had these three scans, she thought she had cancer, this and that. If she would have went to the f physical therapist first, it would have... All that would have been gone. Like I said, that's a normal pattern that we see of, right. of pain. You're not yep. doing, you know, the back and the neck are extremely complex. There's lots of ligaments, muscles, you know, joints that are all intertwined here. And so to try to pick out one little thing that's causing the problem is very difficult. And that's why quite often it's better just to treat the symptoms, Brad. Right. And that's what we do. Right. Uh, the other example, Brad, is uh, quite often, I, I bet you've seen this a hundred times. Sure. Uh, people will come in, they've had a, a scan or x-ray of their knee, mm -hmm. and they'll say, this knee is worse, you know, <laughs> of the two. 
But the guy goes, this one hurts more though. So in other words, the, the x-rays show that arthritis in the right knee is terrible. Yeah. But that, that one doesn't hurt so bad, it's right. the other one. So they end up doing the surgery on the other one quite often. The one they'll, that hurts. They'll go by the symptoms. Even they'll ignore what right. they see in the scans. Mm -hmm. So that's just another example of throughout the body where you know it, it what the scan shows doesn't always indicate what's going on right. as far as pain wise. Right. So uh, they're excellent information, very valuable. But remember, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong with asking your doctors. There's something else I can do, or could the scan have flaws in it? Or Can we hold off on the scan? Right. I think that's probably the best advice, yep. is maybe can we try some other things first, and then we'll try the right. scan if things are going to get, yep. get better. So it's something to think about, and uh, I really think that all this is going to help people out, but we still, I don't think these scans are going to do anything about the... Yeah, we can fix just about anything, but... The broken heart, yeah, so... Yeah, we're trying. Got to lighten that up a little bit. Yeah. All right, <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs>